All right, so uh, today we're looking at 14.3. The homework's going to be posted. It's 1 through 23 odd on the attached PDF. Okay, so uh, what we're starting out, this is the law of sines. We're also going to use the law of sines to uh, find the area of a non-right triangle. Okay, so the area of a right triangle is 1 half base times height. Here we don't have a base or a height. But what we do have is the area equals 1 half side B times side C times the sine of A. Now, side B and C and uh, angle A can always change, but what we're looking at is an included angle of the two given sides. If you have that, you can solve for the area just by simply doing this, okay? So area equals one half B, which is across from B, okay? So that's side B, five, Side C is the 10, and then times the sine of angle A, which is 40 degrees, okay? And you just pop all that into your calculator, okay? This would be 25 times the sine of 40, okay? And so I've got 25 times the sine of 40, and I get the area equals 16.07, let's call it that, okay, good. All right, moving on up. Okay, we will use the uh, law of sines, okay, which is basically just a, a very simple ratio. The sine of A over A equals the sine of B over B, equals the sine of C over C. We'll only use two of these, and when you're solving a ratio, all you do is cross multiply and solve, okay? Why do we need the law of sines to do this stuff? Okay, well, if you're looking at this, you will notice that we are not dealing with a right triangle, okay? The law of sines and the law of cosines are used when we're not dealing with right triangles, okay? So we're gonna solve the triangle using the law of sines. We're gonna round our answers to the nearest hundredth, two decimal spots. First thing I see here, is that I have two angles and I'm gonna get my third angle, okay? Because the interior angles of a triangle always add to 180, okay? So I'm just gonna get in my calculator, I'm gonna go 180, 180 minus the 85 and minus 38 and I get my remaining angle which is 57. So I'll go in here and I'll write 57. <clears throat> okay, now what I do is I set up my law of sines. I have an angle and a side. So I'm gonna set that up. If they're across from each other, they're opposite angles to sides, I'm just gonna say the sine of 38 over 12 equals, and then I'll go for uh, side B here, the sine of 85 over B, unknown B. Okay, I've set up my proportion. Now all I do is cross multiply and solve. So I have uh, B times the sine of 38 equals 12 times the sine of 85. Okay, and again, sine of 85 is just a number. Sine of 38 is just a number. So I'm gonna solve for B by dividing by the sine of 38. and I have B equals, and I just jump into my calculator here, okay, and I'll show you the keystrokes, okay? So I'll just go 12 times the sine of 85, and I'll just hit enter there, and then I'll divide by the sine of 38, and I get 19.42, okay? So side B is 19.42. Now make sure your calculator is in degrees and not radians or else you won't get that same answer. So kind of work along with me. Okay, so now we have an angle opposite side, angle opposite side, angle and not opposite side. So we need to use the law of sines once again to solve for this side. I'm gonna use my 38 and my 12 because those are easier numbers to work with. I could use my 85 and my 19.42, but as we saw, that 19.42 is rounded. So I'm gonna use the solid numbers that I have. Again, I've got the sine 
of 38 over 12, just across, equals the sine of 57 over A. And again, I'm going to cross multiply. I always like to keep my variable on the left side. This is kind of how I work. So I'll manipulate it to make sure that's the case. So I've just cross multiplied. And again, I'll solve for A by dividing by sine of 38. And jump on my calculator and go to work. So I'm gonna go 12 times the sine of 57. Enter and then divide by sine of 38. Okay, and I got 16A equals 16.35. Uh, now, whenever I get done uh, filling out a uh, triangle like this, I look for the angles and sides to kind of match up, the triangle inequality theorem. Smallest angle, smallest side. Medium angle, medium side. Biggest angle, largest side. So if that's all set up, then chances are you did it correctly. Okay? All right. Let's okay, pause. so we're looking at uh, this triangle now. Now we have an angle and its opposite side, but we don't have any other angles. So we're actually going to use the law of sines to find a missing angle. And we're just going to set up the proportion. I'm going to solve this one for angle B because I do have the uh, opposite side here. So I'm going to go sine of 95 over 27 equals the sine of B over 16. Okay, and again, they just go across from one another. Okay, so I'm gonna isolate sine of B. So I'm gonna uh, multiply both sides by 16 or cross multiply here. So I'm gonna cross multiply. I've got 27 times the sine of B equals 16 times the sine of 95. Okay, and to isolate sine of B, I'm gonna divide by 27, divide by 27. So the sine of B equals 16 times the sine of 95 over 27. So if the sine of B equals that, then the inverse sine of this ratio, 16 times the sine of 95 over 27, equals the measurement of angle B. Okay, so we're gonna use our calculator and punch this in. Okay, so I'm gonna bring it over here. We're gonna go inverse sine. I'm gonna open up a couple parentheses. Okay, I'm gonna go 16 times the sine of 95. Duh, close, close, divide by 27, and then close, and that should get me the correct angle. 36.18, okay, so I'll take that. Angle B equals 36.18. Now I'm a very visual learner, I like to put it on the model. 36.18, okay, degrees. All right, so now that I have two angles, I can find the third angle just by subtracting these two from 180. So I'm gonna go 180 minus 95 minus 36.18, and I have uh, 48.82, okay? Now I need to find my third side. Now some uh, common mistake is for some students to use, well, they go A squared plus B squared equals C squared. That is not the case on these because these are not right triangles. You can use the Pythagorean theorem on right triangles, not on these. So I would set up the law of sines again to solve for angle C. Now I'm not gonna, I'm gonna set it up for you, but I'm not gonna solve it. It's the same thing as it was above. I'm gonna go with the sine of 95 over 27 equals the sine of 48.82 over C. So the sine of 95 over 27 equals the sine of 48.82 over side C. And cross multiply and solve and that'll get it for you. All right, very good.